How many times have I talked about this with Blizzard, dude? <laughs> Blizzard used to be my favorite developer. And it was like that whole Diablo 3 time period. Yeah, I waited in line at midnight, got the Diablo 3 Collector's Edition, installed that game, beat it, uninstalled it, and went, this is garbage. <laughs> and that's exactly where I saw Blizzard just start falling off a cliff and I was like oh no this is not my blizzard anymore and I slowly got to a point where I just quit playing their games for obvious reasons there are key differences between the gaming world we have now and the gaming world that was around in the 70s 80s and early 90s one of the key differences is the kind of culture that can be found within gaming companies in the early days of gaming, those who came together to create dev teams from top to bottom were filled with gamers and enthusiasts. They wanted to make the best games possible. One of those people was Blizzard co-founder Mike Morheim, who, along with a roommate of his, made a titan of a game that is still around today. By his own admission, when he joined the company with his roommate, there were people there because they wanted to make great games. However, let me stop for one moment. One of the other things I talk about all the time that happens, I see it. I think that's what they're going to elaborate on right now. I see this in the industry, and I'm not sure. I haven't read this yet, but it seems like they're headed where I talk about a lot of what I, I... My inkling about what happens to a lot of these big gaming juggernauts has happened over time. That has made us become so disenchanted with them, fall out of love with them from the companies that they used to be and the kinds of products that they used to produce for us, you know... It, it feels like they become uh, just so greed focused. They they forget what it's like to, you know, be focused on making great games, which is what got them to where they are in the first place. What happens is like they they get bigger, and as they get bigger, they get less focused on what great video games are, and they become more polluted with just business minded people not video game minded people and so what happens is it's just a bunch of numbers to them then yeah and you get all these people at the top that are just business people business zombies not people that actually know anything about what makes good video games which again is what got them made those businesses so successful in the first place right and for some of them, it's worked for an amount of time. But I think we're starting to see where some of the downfall is occurring. It's it's not working all that well for some of them anymore, is it? As revealed in his new book, Play Nice, The Rise and Fall of Blizzard, Blizzard Entertainment, which Bloomberg got a first look at, he could tell when things were starting to fall apart. And a key reason for that was certain business-minded hires. Holy crap, did I call it or what, guys? Including former CEO Bobby Kotick. Jesus Christ, dude, I'm like a savant. What did I tell everybody whenever they, like, the whole, you know, Microsoft's going to be, you know, agreed to buyer, uh, to buyer, to, to purchase Activision uh, Blizzard. I was like, they've got to fire Bobby Kotick. <laughs> they've got to get rid of Bobby Kotick. If they want Blizzard... Activision to be anything of a semblance of their former, the you know, the former business they were. They've got to get rid of Bobby Kotick. It's exactly what I said whenever all this started going down. I, dude, I've been adamantly against Bobby Kotick for such a long time. And thank God they did that. It hasn't fixed everything yet. It's, you know, that's potentially going to take time. We'll see what happens. Who came on after the Activision merger? When Activision made a key cancellation within the company, they then inserted CFO Armin Zerza to try and keep costs in check. Even though it wasn't Morheim and his team that cost the company so much money. Quote, before Zerza, the company was run by Blizzard lifers and video game enthusiasts. But the CFO brought a completely different mindset. Schreier noted in his book, adding that the dev team would mock the new hire because of his inability to understand the video gaming industry. This. This. I swear to God. 
It seems so blatantly obvious to me that this is the problem in the industry from the top down. And if we get these companies that continue to go like we read about Ubisoft yesterday, you know. And dude, I talk trash about, you know, like Gilmo all the time because he has the stupidest quotes. And it's like, there, there's no way this guy's a gamer. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no way this guy's a gamer or has anything to, any kind of like gaming knowledge in any capacity. He just doesn't, you know what I mean? There, there's no way. You can't relate to him. You know, he's just a business person. That's it. It just, I think this is the biggest problem with these major corporations nowadays. They got to this point of exactly what's being explained right now and that I have been, you know, kind of trying to tell people my, you know, inkling was about what has, has happened in the industry as well which I think this is reinforcing that notion for me, which is why it's, you know, you know, obviously I'm, I'm a little bit tickled by this. Um, and now all of a sudden these big companies are going, well, we just don't know why we're doing bad. You know, we just don't know why things aren't going well for us. It's like, you, you know, <laughs> you don't, you don't know what people want because you're not gaming people. You're business people. You don't know what your consumers want because all you care about is numbers. You don't know anything. And I, it's not that I, you know, it's not that I don't think there are a lot of people that work for those companies that are still gamers and gaming minded people, but I don't think they have a voice. I don't have they, I don't think they have anything substantial to, um, if I don't, I just don't think they have a voice to to give most of the time towards what should be done for the projects or anything like that. In large part, it's always from the top down, you know, and it leads to more often than not mediocre at best products anymore. And all these big giant companies want to know why things just aren't good, you know. I mean, you can look at some of the more recent things we've covered in regards to, like, obviously, Concord was a huge failure, right? Herman Holst, right? Uh, apparently thought that was his, going to be his Star Wars. And, the, you know, you create a, a culture of toxic positivity where people can't constructively criticize the project to try and say what might need to be done to make it a more enjoyable experience for the people who are going to be buying into playing that game. And you're surprised that it fails at a $400 million project? Get wrecked, dude. You know? I mean, this is the problem. Bobby Kotick was the one who drew the ire of the co-founder the most, including stating that the only the most profitable teams should get bonuses instead of everyone who worked at the company, which Morheim was against. At one point, he wrote a long letter to Kotick, noting, I believe that preserving Blizzard's culture and magic is a necessity for preserving Activision Blizzard's advantage of having an organization that can attract and retain the best creative talent in the world and that can consistently produce the highest quality games and experiences. It has been increasingly hard for me to provide blizzard leadership and staff confidence that blizzard has a stable future sure enough he resigned in 2018 and not long after that bobby kotick and activision as a whole came under fire for the frat culture they apparently instilled in morheim's company after he was gone kotick wouldn't leave until microsoft bought out the company in 2023 yep so um Look, I think uh, Activision Blizzard was really cooked way before 2018. Years before, anyways. Years before 2018, uh, I saw it really not being... And, uh, you know, this is obviously just where uh, Morheim... Morheim's... Uh, it's probably Morheim, my bad. Morheim um, kind of bounced out after, you know, probably years of, you know, filling undervalued 
feel like you lost control here. Wasn't able to um, right the ship. And it was just out of control, more than likely. So there was probably a number of years that uh, he saw the decline, just like I did. And uh, finally was like, I can't do this anymore, right? Unfortunately. It feels bad, dude. It does. It feels terrible. But you, I cannot tell you what an amazing read this is. And, and you guys know, anybody that's around here, how often I talk about the gaming industry in a whole in the same exact capacity of what my impression has been for a lot of these major companies just being blinded by greed and numbers and not and being polluted with business minded people uh, from the top down not knowing how to make great content for us as consumers anymore and especially on the front of blizzard again the company that the developer that used to be my favorite you know growing up playing starcraft warcraft uh, you know, Diablo one and two being two of my favorite games of all time. And then just, I won't even play their games anymore. I, I won't play their games. I don't care. Even if they're free to play, I won't play their games. I don't even want to contribute to their player base. I find their company absolutely appalling. It's disgusting. It has been for years, you know, and I've seen it from the outside looking in. It's been very obvious to me that this is who they are. It's so nice to see, uh, you know, my notions be reinforced by somebody that was at the top of this and saw it fall apart and is actually like confirming that, you know, it's not nice to know that they had to deal with this. Don't get me wrong. But as somebody who's been preaching that I thought this was actually the case, kind of good. <laughs>